Okie doke, here we go. Good evening, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Tonight's going to be Volume 1, Part 7 of the deposition of the lovely and oh-so-talented Bellin Lemus. Notes from James, that ever-present PayPal donation request. If you guys are enjoying the content or you find it beneficial, donations are always appreciated and helpful. You can donate either by joining Patreon. That's probably the best value is subscribing to Patreon because then you're going to get access to all of the work product and videos and other benefits that we offer there. Or if you prefer not to do that, a donation through PayPal would be great. There's the link. Or do a YouTube membership. That works too. Um, but I'm bump. What else do we have? Uh, also, for Patreon and YouTube, Patreon subscribers and YouTube members, James has started adding all of the full volume video depots ad-free. So that's another benefit. So you don't have to deal with the ads. And I think that's it for all the marketing stuff. If you guys have any questions as we go through tonight's stream or any other stream, please do email them in to capsandstenslaw at gmail.com. That's C-A-P-S-A-N-D-S-T-E-N-S-L-A-W at gmail.com. And again, I posted it right up here. So there you go. We'll answer whatever questions or try to answer whatever questions you might have during the streams during the week. And one more reminder for Patreon, for those of you who are interested, you can go ahead, go there, check it out, and subscribe at, and let me post that, from Chicago, Crook County, Illinois where the motto is vote early and often, even if you're dead. Love it. Love it as long as they're voting for Trump. Uh, so anyway, if you want to take a look at Patreon and all the stuff we have up there for consumption, I put the link right there. So go check that out. Victor Roth, thanks for joining us, man. Anyway, tonight, here we go. Let's get rocking. Bell and Lemus, Volume 1, Part 7. She's 30 minutes long. And I think that's it. Jason Dunyas. Oh, it's a question, but we'll, ask, we'll answer that at the end of the stream. So anyway, here we go. We're off. Off to the races. Cool, man. And you had Grandma, who at some point during the day on the 8th, came to assist mom, right? Correct. And as far as you knew at that point in time, that is the point in time, the decision was made to seize. Nobody had any information about dad other than the fact that mom had said he was out of town on a business trip, correct? If I recall correctly, yes. Okay, so we have three perps, child's in the hospital, or three potential perps, child's in the hospital, yeah? Correct. Did you have any evidence to suggest that mom would take the, ho take the child from the hospital and flee. I don't think I had any evidence, but I, no, not okay. me. Per se, per Did se. anybody that you know of have any evidence to suggest that mom would take the child from the hospital and flee that night? I, I can't tell you that as in regards to Detective Perez or, or Deputy Schmoker. Okay. I can tell you that myself, I, I don't think I did. Okay. To your knowledge, did anybody have any evidence that mom was going to interfere with the medical treatment of that child? I personally did not know. Okay. Now, now, you saw the hospital bed, didn't you? Yes. Okay. And he had like tubes running out of him. His head was in a, a band. Yes, sir. Yeah. Didn't look like he was going to be moving anywhere, right? Calls for speculation. Not on his own, anyway. Correct, sir. Okay. And in fact, it appeared to you that to remove him would have been a danger. Vague and overbroad. At that point, yes. Yeah. And he was in that room, and there were machines hooked up to him? Yes. Okay. There were nurses that would come in and out and monitor his progress? Yes. And doctors? I'm sure there was. I don't remember doctors, but yes. Well, there's a lot of hospitalist staff around to monitor the child. 
Yes. Did you have any evidence at all to suggest that in spite of being in the hospital, with all these tubes and machines attached to him, and doctors and nurses coming in and out of the room, that mom would do anything to harm that child? Calls for speculation. <clears throat> I wasn't just basing it on his injuries. I was, or the fact that, like you said, he couldn't, he wasn't going anywhere. It's, I, I didn't know if mom was the actual perpetrator because of the explanation that was given. So you were speculating? I just think we didn't have enough information to know whether there was, uh, that he would be safe. But that's not the test, is it? The test isn't whether or not you have information to prove he'll be safe, is it? The, mm -hmm. test, the test is whether or not you have specific and articulable evidence to show the child's in immediate danger of suffering severe bodily injury or death at the hands of the parents, right? That's the test. Correct. Okay. So it doesn't matter that you couldn't prove the child was safe. Your obligation was to prove the child would be in danger if left where the parents, with the parents, right? I don't know. Stumped her with that one. I know that the information based on what I, I heard in the conversations, I deemed that Rachel Bruno was a danger and that child would be in danger in her custody. Hold on a second. I'm going to object to that as non-responsive. I'm going to reserve my right to move to strike it. Can I have the question reread, please? Listen really carefully to the question because the answer you're giving me is not what I'm looking for here. Okay. So it doesn't matter that you couldn't prove the child was safe. Your obligation was to prove the child would be in danger if left with the parents, right? Correct. Okay. So when we're going through that <clears throat> test, that obligation, that is the specific articulable facts, no hunches, no speculations, right? Correct, sir. Going through the specific articulable facts to show that mom is an immediate danger to the child that night at the hospital. You with me so far? Yes. What you had in terms of evidence was the severity of the injury to, to uh, I think you said, seven-month-old child? A seven-week-old. Seven-week, I'm sorry. Severity of injury to a seven-week-old child, right? Correct. Shannon King, who spent the entire night on... July 8th with the child, right? Correct. Okay. And uh, mom, who woke up at 4 a.m. in the morning with the child screeching, right? Correct. Did you think for a moment that it could have been Shannon King that injured this child? Yes, there were several people. Several people. So you had, nothing, you had nothing specific to pin on mom. Right, you had several people that had access to the child. Aside from mother having um, had access to the child, uh, I did question within myself. Uh, it did take, it appeared that it took her a while to get the child medical care. So that was a concern of mine. Um, but ultimately, she got the child medical care. In fact, she's the one that brought the child to the hospital. Correct. Okay. Once she was able to get her mother to come over and help her out, the two of them took the child to the hospital. Correct, sir. Okay. So, again, well, let me ask you this first. Maybe you never learned this. Did you learn in any of your training and your experience that past injury to a child is an insufficient basis for a finding of exigency? I, I understand the concept, sir. I believe I have been trained on that. Okay. So 
the delay in seeking medical treatment, what, 12 hours prior to the time that you got involved on, in the case, that delay, if I'm understanding you correctly, are you saying that delay somehow caused the child to be in danger? I was not sure um, that Rachel Bruno, not, I, I, I was not sure that she acted accordingly and that she was able to protect that child. And that was a concern of mine as far as, if I remember correctly, her statement was that the child started crying at 4 a.m., fell asleep with her, was awake, uh, missed a couple of feedings, waited for her mom to, uh, I believe it was her mother or mother-in-law, to get there, and then took the child to the hospital. Um, so to me, that child was in danger um, at the time. Well, did Miss Bruno, did you have any reason to suggest that Miss Bruno somehow knew that morning at 4 a.m. or between 4 a.m. and 11 a.m. that this child had suffered a severe head injury? Calls for speculation. I mean, she's the one that has to have reasonable and articulable evidence. I'm just delving into it. Can I have the question reread, please? Do you have any evidence to suggest that? Anything at all? I think at that time it was pointed out that the child did have a, a bump in the back of the head. And it was, it was obvious. And when you said at that time, that would have been around, what, 8 p.m. the evening of the 8th, after the child had already been at the hospital for hours? No, I'm saying at the time that I when when the investigation was being conducted that we learned that the child did have that bump mm -hmm. how did bump did anybody talk to you about how long it would take for a bump like that to form after an injury no sir no i don't remember specifically speaking to somebody about that you have any specific medical training that would inform you in your view about how long it would take for a bump like that to form minutes hours any idea at all? Um, no, sir. Okay. So again, you would have been speculating. I, I, yes. Okay. But we know that we can't speculate when we're talking about seizing a child from the custody of its parents without getting a warrant, right? Correct, sir. Am I also correct that when you guys were concerned about the perpetrator, whether it be mom, Shannon King, grandmother, you couldn't at that point in time pin it on any of them, right? Correct. And had you done so, that also would have been based on speculation, correct? Or a hunch? I'm not sure what you're asking. Hey, if I ask you, who did it? You couldn't definitively tell me who did it. Correct. Okay. And if you did tell me, oh, Shannon King did it, that'd just be speculation. Correct. Same with respect to mom. If you had said, oh, mom did it, that would just be speculation. Correct. Okay. But I think we talked about your training earlier that speculation hunches do not meet the requirement of specific articulable evidence, right? Correct, sir. Okay. Let's talk about a little bit. I think we've kind of exhausted. Now, okay, now for a quick break. Sure. We are going off the record. The time is 3 o'clock. <clears throat> Must be very uncomfortable to be her right now. Though. We are going back on the record. Yes. The time is 312. Let's talk about all the same rules apply with respect to warrants in relation to right? Yes, sir. Okay. And you are aware that 
at least after the interview of Rachel Bruno, you were aware that was with his grandparents that night, right? Yes. Okay. And Rachel Bruno, she was at the hospital, right? Correct. Pretty much all day. Close for speculation. Well, she was at the hospital when we got there, yes. And she told you that she had been at the hospital since she originally brought right? If I remember correctly, yes, sir. And before you began the interview with Ricardo, uh, Detective Perez had released Rachel Bruno to go sleep in the room. Is that right? I don't know where, where Rachel went. You don't remember? Well, okay, let's, let's eliminate where she went to sleep. You do remember that Detective Perez released her so that she could go get some sleep somewhere in the hospital, right? Calls for speculation. I mean, I can't say that I know that she went to sleep, sir, but I know that at some point she left. Okay. Did she leave the hospital or just leave the room? I, I just know that we no longer had contact with her after the interview. Did you have any information at all, any specific articulable information at all to suggest she was going to run right out there to the Chandler's home and hurt? Calls for speculation. I personally don't think I did, sir. Okay. What about anybody else that you were meeting with that day? You were there with Detective Perez. Did you hear her say she had? any specific articulable information at all to suggest Rachel Bruno was somehow going to go injure her child that night? Detective Perez did not express any, any of that to me. I mean, she didn't tell me exactly. She didn't give me a lot of information. Okay. I, I just kind of assisted her, so I, I can't answer that. I don't know. Okay. That, and that's fair. I mean, on a lot of this stuff, based on your earlier testimony, I would expect you not to know. With respect to Rachel Bruno and Bruno, based on what you knew at that time, what evidence did you have to suggest she was going to inflict any injury at all on while he was under the care of his grandparents that night? Asked and answered. Go ahead. I didn't have a lot of information or actually much information because of the fact that I wasn't mm -hmm. present with Detective Perez in regards to whatever information she was gathering. Uh, Detective Perez told me what she wanted to tell me or what she needed to tell me and she didn't confer with me or mm -hmm. I, I really didn't have much information, sir. Uh, as to either child or What did she tell me? No, you didn't have much information at all as to either child. You? Me per se, no, not, yeah. not right. offhand. Right. I mean, not firsthand. So you can't really, sitting here today, you can't really say, at that time I thought either seizure was reasonable because you just didn't have the information, right? That's correct, sir. Okay. So with respect to Bruno in relation to Rachel Bruno, do you believe that uh, knowing what you know now, Detective Perez's decision to seize from Rachel was reasonable? Calls for speculation, calls for a legal conclusion, calls for an expert opinion. Well, I think she is an expert, so anyway, go ahead. Do you need the question we read again? Yes, please. Sure. So with respect to in relation to Rachel Bruno, do you believe that, knowing what you know now, Detective Perez's decision to seize Rachel was reasonable? I calls for speculation. I still don't have all of the information that uh, Detective Perez had. I, I did read her supplemental report, um, but I don't. I didn't review the medical reports or anything, any of that, sir. So. In all honesty, I couldn't tell you because I don't, I didn't conduct the investigation. I wasn't the lead investigator. I don't know her thought. I wasn't in her, asking her about her thought process. Okay. 
So if I'm understanding right, you can't tell me one way or the other here today, even though you've reviewed all the reports, you can't tell me one way or the other whether, based on your training and experience, she had reasonable cause to seize from mom on July 9th, 2015. Am I understanding you right? In, in regards to... Yeah. Uh, based on the police report that I read, sir, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I couldn't give you an opinion. You didn't I don't see, remember. You didn't see anything in that report, any facts or specific evidence in that report that stood out to you to suggest that somehow mom was going to rush out that night before somebody could get a warrant and harm in some way? You didn't see any facts that just stood out on the face of the report to suggest that? No, sir. I reviewed it, but I wasn't looking for those facts. Okay. Now let's talk about with respect uh, to and dad, Ricardo Bruno. How was he during the interview? What was his demeanor? Asked and answered. That's okay. Uh, Ricardo? Yeah. Appeared to be upset, if I remember mm -hmm. correctly. You remember how long his interview lasted? I don't remember, sir. Do you remember hearing anything in that interview that you would believe would satisfy the specific articulable evidence requirement that you've learned over the years? Did you hear any, anything in his interview that you believed would support a claim that he was somehow a danger to that night, July, that early morning hours, July 9th, 2015? Anything at all? I don't remember the actual interview. I remember some of the content, but I don't, I can't tell you that I, I remember anything specific. Well, you read all the reports, right? Correct, sir. And that was, what, a couple days ago? Yes. Okay. How, mu how much time did you spend preparing for this deposition? Several hours. Several, what's that, five, seven, ten? Mm, anywhere between maybe eight to ten hours. Okay, so basically a full work day or close to it. Correct, sir. Okay. Um, and reviewing the reports in preparation for your deposition, was there any evidence in there at all to suggest that Ricardo Bruno, that day, July 9th, 2015, posed an immediate risk of any kind at all to his child. Calls for speculation calls for a legal conclusion. I don't recall seeing anything in the reports, but I wasn't specifically looking for that, so I, sure. I don't recall, sir. When you were with Detective Perez um, after midnight on July 9th, 2015, at any point in time did you guys discuss the fact that there was no evidence whatsoever to suggest that Ricardo Bruno was an immediate danger to his son? I don't think I discussed that with Detective Perez at all. Did either, did, did you and her discuss the fact that maybe I should look a little bit closer before, you know, pulling the trigger on seizing at least no, sir. Okay. You didn't think that was something important? Because I was not the lead investigator, because I only went to assist as she needed me, which mm -hmm. she really didn't. <laughs> um, I, I trusted the information that she was gathering, the steps that she was taking, that mm -hmm. she was taking at the time. But you didn't know what information she had. You knew a limited amount, but you didn't know what she had. Correct, sir. So it, I, I, did it not, I did not discuss it. She was conducting her investigation. I did not want to, want to interrupt mm -hmm. um, the steps that she was taking. Um, so I can't, I mean, I, I don't know. Okay, that, that's fair. I think I already asked you this, but you, you don't have any specific medical training relating to um, child abuse pediatrics, right? No, sir. Okay. Or actually relating to 
the care of children at all, right? Correct. Okay. Do you have kids yourself? No, it's uh, invasion of privacy and no instruction not to answer. Oh, I'll ask her in front of the jury, that's fine. Okay. You won't get the instruction there. Okay. Do you know um, the level of Deputy Schmoker's investigation? Do you know what steps he took or what he did there at the hospital that night? I reviewed his police report mm -hmm. and based on that, mm -hmm. because I don't remember specifically what he said the night of, mm -hmm. uh, I know that he responded to the hospital he spoke with Rachel. I know that he spoke with um, someone from the medical staff. <coughs> and then and at some point he notified Special Victims Bureau. Am I correct that at the conclusion of his investigation, um, Deputy Schmoker concluded that the only way he could have obtained his injuries was from blunt trauma from an unknown object or person? Calls for speculation. That was his conclusion. Go ahead. Are you asking me if that's what he wrote in the report? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that sounds familiar, sir, yes. Okay. So uh, it, I want to make sure I'm correct on this. At the point in time that you were there with uh, Detective Perez talking to Deputy Schmoker, do you recall him telling you at this point we don't know who did this? Or words to that effect? Yeah, I don't think he ever pointed out a specific person mm -hmm. as to who, who inflicted the injury on the child. Okay. Show you what will mark as exhibit number two. It's your deposition. Do you recognize exhibit number two? Yes, sir. What is it? It's the police report uh, Deputy Schmoker wrote. Okay. And you've reviewed this report before? Yes. About two days ago or so. Um, this one I reviewed, I think, three days ago. Okay. If I can get you to turn to page number 76ORG003491. Towards the middle of the page there, there's a uh, paragraph that begins V slash, do you see that? Yes, sir. Okay. Right after the V slash, it says SJ father, right? Yes. What does that mean, SJ? A subject victim. Okay. What does that I'm mean? I'm sorry, subject. Okay, so at that point, it was not even identified as a victim, am I right? Not in the actual narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, correct. He, he did not label him as a victim. Okay. So at that point in time, there was actually no suspicion whatsoever that any crime had even been committed as to, is that right? Calls for speculation. I mean, if you're asking me to base it on this right here, in this paragraph, 
it doesn't indicate that he was a victim. Well, you read the whole report when you read it, right? Oh, yes, sir. Yeah, so based on what Deputy Schmoker had gleaned during his investigation that evening, am I correct that at that point in time, the child Bruno was not um, identified as having been the victim of a crime? Calls for of any crime? Calls for speculation. Uh, correct. Okay. You see here it says, uh, Father Ricardo Bruno arrived at the hospital just prior to, looks like SVB's arrival. Did I read that right? Yes. SVB, would that have been you and Detective Perez? Correct. So by the time you got to the hospital, does that refresh your recollection that Ricardo Bruno was already there? No, sir. I mean, he wrote that, but I don't remember specifically. Okay. But if he's saying that, I mean, okay. it must have happened. And at that point in time, Deputy Schmoker, he was also unable to interview uh, the nanny, Shannon King, right? Cause for speculation. Well, you can turn to 76ORG003492. You see right there at the top of the page? Yes. Did he tell you that evening when you were out there with uh, Detective Perez that, hey, I haven't been able to contact the nanny? I don't remember him saying that, but I know that it's in the report. Okay. And you know that you didn't uh, contact the nanny that night either, right? Correct. And as far as you know, um, Detective Perez didn't contact the nanny that night either, right? Calls for speculation. Said as far as you know. As that far as I know, correct, right. yes. That way you're not speculating. Now you went out to the Bruno home in the early morning hours of July 9th, 2015 with Detective Perez, correct? Correct, sir. Okay. Did you go through the home, inspect the home? I remember we walked to the to the bedroom. Mm -hmm. I don't remember walking through the whole home. Okay. Did you take pictures? I, I did not, sir. Did you notice anything uh, that struck you as odd or out of the ordinary as you were walking through the home? Not that I remember, no. Okay. Well, there we have it. That was fun. Um, kind of backed her a little bit into a corner. I, I think they're all fucked, frankly. I don't. I, I remember some of the case. And I know that we extracted a substantial settlement from them. That's a whole different story. Actually, pretty funny story all on its own. But um, as far as seizing the child without a warrant, this one's fucked. I remember Laura Todd, I think she was fucked. And her uh, supervisor, the Disney lady, forget her name, I think she is fucked. So now we're just really, after this one, I don't think we're quite done with her, but after she is done, we get to talk to Detective Perez, I think. And I think she's going to be fucked too, if I remember correctly. Anyway, putting the cart ahead of the horse. Let me go down here. Patreon questions. Jason Duñez or Duenas. Is there a word or page limit for a federal complaint? I have looked and just can't find any info. Thanks. If you look at FRCP rule, I believe it's 8A, all that's required of a complaint is a short and plain statement of the facts that give rise to the claim for relief. Now, what does that mean? Because I, I can tell you right now, if you uh, just set out the elements, no federal district judge is ever going to let it slip through. That is why, if you get on, you're, you're on Patreon, Jason, 
but look at some of our complaints. Some of them are 50, 60, 80 pages long, depends on how complex the story is and how long of a time period it covers. But we tend to be fairly detailed. The idea is I like to be able to write an engaging story that sucks the reader in so that they want to read or at least don't mind reading more. And so that at the when they get to the end of the story, they know something bad happened. You know, they're not left guessing about, you know, who did what, who the villain is, and what the villain did. So that's kind of the general guideline I would give. And no, there's no page limit at all. That's why you can't find it, the rules. The only rule that relates to it is, that, is FRCP 8A, and that is the short, plain statement of the facts giving rise to the claim for relief. So I know that's not a lot of guidance, but it is better than no guidance at all. Um, let's see what else. We don't have any other questions from Caps and Stems or Patreon, so let's just get to it. Thank you guys for attending tonight's stream. Hope you enjoyed it. The Patreon link is up there. We mentioned it several times tonight during the video. It's right, right there. So if you're either an attorney looking to get into this area or, you know, looking for some guidance in a case that you've already got in this area of law, or you're a pro se plaintiff, again, looking for some guidance, some templates to follow, Patreon is a good place to start. We've posted a lot of work product up there. And in my view, it's a bargain for what you get. I think we have a $3, $8, $12, to $32 level. But um, anyway, yeah, at least take a look. Tomorrow, we're going to have Bellin Limas again, Volume 1, Part 8. Remember, if you have any questions, please do email them into capsandstemslaw at gmail.com. That's C-A-P-S-A-N-D-S-T-E-M-S-L-A-W at gmail.com. And we will try to respond to those during the live streams during the week. Remember, Patreon subscribers, your questions get answered ASAP to the extent that I've got time right now. And the month of May, I'm super busy. I have depositions almost every day which is probably a good thing for you guys here on the channel because it means there's going to be a never-ending stream of material. But um, anyway, yeah, I'm going to be busy as shit uh, for the balance of this month and next. Just a reminder, if you look right below the video, there's a video description. If you click or tap show more, there are tons of links to catch up on, review past videos, as well as that all-important Patreon link. If you guys are enjoying the content, and this one's pretty important because James keeps him motivated. He tracks those statistics. Please show your support by liking, sharing, commenting, and subscribing. Super important. Subscribe. We really do hope the content we are providing you may help you in some way to navigate the challenges that you're facing, whether it be in litigation or, or a juvenile dependency case or whatever the case may be. I, I really do hope this helps. Anyway, with that, have a great rest of your evening. And again, thank you for joining us tonight. Good night, all.